Hello everybody, this is Bamboo. It is Friday, April 17th. I'm sending my blessings and uh, prayers to everybody out there in the world, in this country, that are going through tough times right now. And uh, we're starting to see people wake up. Um, it's a never-ending cycle of people out there in the mainstream that um, have to be woken up. We have to do our best to wake everybody up, our family and our friends, as difficult as it might be. Um, as stubborn as many people are, um, they have to release their previous judgments and then open up their mind to really what is going on. And the first step to that is turning off the TV and stop following mainstream media. Um, we're starting to see around the country in states like Michigan and Ohio, um, people are fed up and uh, we are starting to see that our constitutional rights are being threatened every day. Now it's time to get out of this left-right trap that this society has been built on. It's a corrupt system, and no matter if you're on the left or right, whatever you support, it's all a part of the same corrupt system, and we have to break free from that and come together in unity as humans, as Americans, as citizens, and we have to pull together, and the only way we can become stronger and a real force is if we unite. So... We're starting to see that in Ohio and Michigan, people are are fed up and they're taken to the streets, they're taken to the Capitol and they're protesting that they are fed up with this. And I support them fully. It is time, I think, that we start to form some plans in each of our states and our counties to come together and stand up for our rights and stand up for the fact that we know that what is going on is wrong. So the last four or five years, it's been a real political circus. Um, this country has gone into, it's really just a circus. Uh, it's a freak show. And I'm tired of it. I've been tired of it for a long time, for many years. And I'm sure many Americans out there like me are feeling the same. So we're starting to see our constitutional rights being threatened. And uh, Donald Trump earlier today sent out a tweet what seems to be supporting supporting these protesters and I wanted to read an article from politico.com about that situation that's going on and it also talks about uh, what's going on with all the governors and the mi mixed messages everywhere that's what we're getting we're getting mixed messages everywhere and everybody seems to think it's all Donald Trump's fault I'm not a fan of his I'm not a fan of any politician for that matter because they're all corrupt in my book. But the fact that Donald Trump is getting blamed for almost everything that's gone on in this country and with this virus of how he's handled it, he's getting the blame for that. I don't think that's right. It's not accurate. And it's just a game that they're playing. So uh, this article is from Politico.com. It's, it's written by Quint Forgey. And it's titled, Trump Breaks with His Own Guidelines to Back Conservative Anti-Quarantine Protesters. The president's social media posts come amid growing frustration among some conservative groups over state mitigation measures. President Donald Trump culminated a swerving, week-long power struggle against the nation's governors with an apparent endorsement of protesters who have defied leaders of coronavirus-stricken states public health experts, and the most senior members of his own administration. In a series of tweets Friday afternoon, the president issued an online call to liberate Minnesota, Michigan, and Virginia, all states where aggrieved residents have gathered in public in recent days to demonstrate in opposition to stay-at-home orders declared by Democratic governors. Liberate Minnesota, Trump wrote, followed soon after by a message that read, Liberate Michigan. He also tweeted, Liberate Virginia and save your great Second Amendment. It is under siege. The president's social media posts come as some conservative groups have grown increasingly frustrated with the local directives that have slammed the brakes on the U.S. economy, the strength of which have been a key selling point of Trump's re-election effort. Trump's tweets also represent the latest salvo in a rhetorical back and forth between governors seeking more robust assistance from his administration and the president loath to accept blame for a federal response 
that has been widely criticized as inadequate and slow-footed. Amid the urgent state efforts, thousands of protesters, many wearing Trump paraphernalia, have congregated in the capital cities of Minnesota, Michigan, and Virginia, flouting stringent mitigation measures imposed by Democratic governors Tim Walz, Gretchen Whitmer, and Ralph Northam. Northam was dismissive of Trump's unexpected broadside at a news conference Thursday, telling reporters that he and his staff are fighting a biological war. I do not have time to involve myself in Twitter wars. Tensions boiled over on a conference call Friday when Senate Democrats pressed Vice President Mike Pence on a national testing for coronavirus. Trump's tweets came up at the end of the call when Senator Tim Kaine, Democratic of Virginia, asked why the president was trying to incite division with his series of liberate posts. Pence said the administration would continue to work with governors while also communicating with the American people. But the Democrats weren't satisfied. Kane called the president's tweets disrespectful, and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer pressed the vice president to answer Kane's questions. Washington Governor Jay Inslee had a stronger reaction to president's posts, issuing a lengthy statement condemning Trump's rhetoric. He said Trump's tweets encouraged illegal and dangerous acts and put millions of people in danger of contracting the virus. I hope someday we can look at today's meltdown as something to be pitied rather than condemned. But we don't have that luxury today. There was too much at stake, Inslee said. The president's suggestion that Americans should disobey state orders directly contradicts his own past statements acknowledging governor's authority to announce restrictions to combat the disease spread. Ask about the demonstrations at his coronavirus news briefing Thursday, Trump declined to condemn them, instead noting that they seemed to be protesters that like me, and that the marchers had been going through it a long time. Those remarks bore echoes of the president's refusal to condemn white supremacist marchers who gathered in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017 for a Unite the Right rally where a counter-protester was killed. Trump, in the aftermath of that deadly clash, proclaimed there had been very fine people on both sides of the rally, an assessment for which he was widely rebuked. The president's seeming encouragement of the protesters Thursday also flies in the face of federal social distancing guidance, which is in effect until the end of the month, as well as his administration's new recommendations advising states to proceed with caution when reopening. Discussing those guidelines Thursday, Trump acknowledged every state is very different and said that, if they need to remain closed, we will allow them to do that. But the president, eager to restart the collapsing economy, was not so differential earlier this week and has vacillated widely when discussing the nature of federal versus state powers as they apply to local stay-at-home orders. On Sunday, Trump instructed governors to prepare their testing programs and apparatus to fight the outbreak, tweeting that states should be ready and the federal government is there to help. Trump insisted Monday, however, that he alone had the power to reopen the country, not governors. Despite his reluctance to issue a nationwide stay-at-home order or any federally enforceable mitigation measures, he also argued that the president's authority is total and said governors will agree to his plans for emerging from state shutdowns. In Texas, where far-right protesters demanded action Thursday at the state capitol building in Austin, Governor Greg Abbott outlined the state's strategy for reopening the economy. Abbott, a Republican, has sought to walk a tightrope between appeasing conservatives in the state who say lockdowns have been an overreaction and public health officials warning of the virus spread. He refused to call an order shelter in place, even though it was effectively that. The governor attempted to restrike the balance again with Friday's order, which included plans to reopen only a narrow slice of the state. He said stores could try to retail to go, state parks would reopen but with heavy restrictions, and that health care providers could restart some surgeries and diagnostic testing, though he said abortions were still banned in the state. Abbott also announced that schools and universities would remain closed through the end of the academic year, and the state's lockdown orders would remain in place for now. So, it is good to see uh, people in Michigan, Ohio, and Virginia starting to take back their rights, or at least attempt to. Uh, you have to start somewhere, and I, I fully support the Americans out there 
that are saying they are fed up with it. Uh, I'll leave a link to the article in the description. And thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully you're being safe out there. Uh, I hope everybody has a nice weekend. And uh, keep trying to wake people up. It's, uh, it's something we all should be doing with our family and our friends is planting the seeds of truth and opening up their minds. Thank you for watching. Be safe and bless up.